Greetings everyone and welcome to this special session on adolescence and the issues pertaining to this phase in a person's life. The webinar on the topics adolescence and the issues pertaining to it and mental health issues is a part of various programs conducted by the Hubs of Learning, an initiative by CBSC. Under the Hubs of Learning scheme, it has been decided by the board to form groups of four to six neighborhood schools for collaborative growth. The schools in the hub of learning should collaborate for academics, to provide holistic education, share resources, contribute towards professional development, and build a sense of community to overcome isolation. Finally, the most important objective is that schools engage in mutually beneficial professional learning that has the power to facilitate systematic changes in school processes and culture. We are extremely fortunate to have with us Dr. Vanita Methi, a leading medical practitioner in the Twin Cities of Bhilai and Durk to address this topic. Dr. Vanita Methi has done her MBBS and DNB. She is also a qualified yoga instructor. She has put in 23 years of medical service to this place with the clinic Skin Talks. And her special interests include clinical dermatology, facial rejuvenation, nutrition, fitness, and counseling. May I request you, Dr. Methi, to please begin the session by explaining to us what exactly the term adolescence means. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Vanita Methi and uh, I'm a qualified dermatologist and venereologist practicing at my clinic in Nehrunagar Bhilai, Chhattisgarh. And uh, it's my proud privilege to be a part of uh, this very good initiative on adolescent health issues. And I'm sincerely thankful to Principal uh, Mr. Parsant Vashist and his entire team for including me in this endeavor and uh, making me a part of this program. What is adolescence? So adolescence literally means to emerge, to attain identity. So adolescence is a transition from childhood to adulthood. And WHO defines adolescence as persons belonging to age group of 10 to 19 years. Adolescent is a stage where lot of physical, biological, cognitive, moral and behavioral changes are occurring in the persons. So, do you know that India has a population of 243 million adolescents right now. So that is equivalent to around 22% of our entire population. So we can say every one in five person is an adolescent. So now you can understand why we are doing this webinar because this is a very important and pertinent issue to have an adolescent health care system and addressing adolescent health issues. Adolescents are persons who are yet to develop their own identity. They are yet to become a full-fledged person. So, uh, we can put it this way, ki ek adolescent, yani ki ek kishor avastha, ek gili mitti ki tarah hai. To jaysay gili mitti ko hum bohat artistically or creatively mold kar sakte hai, वैसे ही एडोलेसेंट स्टेज में अगर फैमिली लेवल पे सोसाइटल लेवल पे और स्कूल लेवल पे हम पॉजिटिव एफर्ट्स करते हैं तो हम एक बहुत ही रिस्पॉन्सिबल और बहुत 
happy adolescent population ko nurture kar sakte hain and that will help creating a very very good future for our society and country after that clear and insightful explanation into what exactly adolescence is keeping the same vein of thought ma'am may i ask you to explain what are the various stages of adolescence uh yeah uh, actually who divides adolescence into three stages early adolescence that is 10 to 13 years of age and this is the age when a child uh you know thinks am i normal that's the biggest question in the mind of the child am i normal the child's body is developing they are developing sexual characteristics and they have lot of queries regarding their body parts and this is the uh, age of the adolescence when family support matters a lot and second stage is middle adolescence that is 14 to 16 years of age and that's the stage when a child asks who am i they are searching for their identity which is separate from their family and uh, from their friends so they are trying to find out their own identity and this is the time when adolescent brain goes for uh, sensational activities risk taking behavior and this is the uh, most important stage of adolescence when they need support and third is late adolescence that is 17 to 19 years of age and this is the stage when the child asks where am i going so they are mainly concerned with their future what they are going to do they have so many insecurities regarding their career their uh, uh, school college admissions and now they are struggling to develop a separate uh, physical emotional and also financial identity separate from their family so these are the three main stages of adolescence ma'am you have explained the various stages of adolescence to us and now my next question to you is how can adolescents take care of their physical health uh the most uh, important objectives during adolescence is maintaining their nutrition because their body is growing they require lot of good quality food and their nutrition plays the biggest role in their physical and mental well-being second is improving their sexual and reproductive health third is enhancing their mental health during this especially covid times their uh, the adolescents have gone through a lot not meeting with their friends not doing the usual activities not going to school for such long periods of time so they are like a prison in their own homes so lot of mental health issues have come up and uh, adolescent uh, healthcare system is trying to address all these issues preventing injuries and violence is also a very important objective because this is the time when adolescent brain is wired to take risks and they go in for uh, rebellious activities they are rash driving drowning and violence fighting with each other and injuring in turn these are all very common incidences and last but not least is preventing substance abuse amongst the adolescents because of so much of academic pressure so much of social pressure and with the internet and social media the kind of emotional stress our youngsters are going through we cannot even imagine so this is the time when they opt for easy going solutions and they opt for tobacco intake alcohol intake other drugs and uh, this is the time when we have to be very vigilant and very supportive so that they are properly guided and monitored so this is a very important objective of adolescent healthcare programs dr methi we have noticed that during this phase of life teenagers become very conscious about their appearance and they spend a lot of time in front of the mirror experimenting with their makeup with their hairstyles and their interest in beautiful dresses can you please explain to us how we can guide them through this phase of life and help them to reach their goals 
<laughs> yeah, it's a very pertinent question. And uh, here I would just say that, you know, everyone wants to look good. Everyone wants to feel good. And, uh, you know, during adolescence, the far most important thing in their mind is to be loved, respected and accepted by their friends, by their family and by society at large. So I would say that it's not a bad thing to be conscious about their body image. It's, uh, you know, it's a kind of part and partial of being an adolescent about being conscious about their body because their body is growing and they sometimes don't like their body. And I would say that it's not a very trivial problem. Whenever a child is approaching to their parents that I don't like this in my body, I don't like this thing about my look or my personality, then we should not just reject it as something trivial or unimportant or we should not make them feel that they are wasting time on their looks because this is the foremost important need of their life to be accepted and liked. So here I would suggest all the parents who are listening to me that if your child is anytime approaching to you and saying that they don't want to go out, I don't feel confident or I don't like this thing about my body. So please, please give an ear to them. Please listen to them. Just sit with them, spend some quality time with them, try to make them understand that they are unique and beautiful in their own way. They don't need to be compared with others, but at the same time, they can do a lot of things to improve their look and overall their persona. So body image issues in adolescence is a real problem. And this has to be addressed with a lot of patience and a lot of positive support from everyone. Like I'm working in a clinical field since last 23, 24 years. So every day in my clinic, uh, youngsters they come, they don't like their face, they have acne scars, they have plenty of acne, my skin is dark, my hair is getting grey, I don't like the way my body shape is. So every day they are coming but once we guide them how to go about it, how to deal with it, how to improve their looks through good diet, through good sleep and all other measures which can be taken, they are very happily accepting these positive changes if we approach them very positively. But at the same time, if a youngster is approaching us with some problem, they're not liking some of their body parts, coming again and again, spending a lot of time in front of the mirror, avoiding social events and not coming in front of the guests at home, then it is a red flag sign for parents. This is the time when the child is probably entering into a body dysmorphic disorder. So body dysmorphic disorder is a psychological illness where a particular person or a youngster perceives a particular body part as very ugly and unacceptable. But it is not really so. So the parents may think that that body part abnormality is a very trivial thing. But it is not trivial for the child because the developing brain of that particular adolescent is perceiving that change as very abnormal and the child cannot help but persist in thinking so. So here comes the role of positive psychotherapy and family support and sometimes even uh, psychotherapeutic medications are also required. So body image issues are real things. We should be very patient in dealing with this. We should not just dismiss it. And uh, I can say that all, we all must have uh, faced these issues during our adolescent times. I still remember I used to look at my pimply face and used to feel so bad uh, that uh, how can I correct it? So some or other persons have helped us come through those changes in our body and mind. So let us help our adolescents, our young adults with these body image issues in very positive way. And the first and foremost important thing for parents is to listen to their child, what they are actually trying to say. Listen patiently and then deal with the problem according to the extent of the disturbance it is causing in the adolescent.
Ma'am, you have explained this topic so well that I'm sure our teenagers will benefit immensely from your words of wisdom. They will understand that beauty is but skin deep and being perfect in other respects of life is important too. We move on now in the sequence of questions, ma'am. The next question is, how can adolescents take care of their personal hygiene and reproductive health? Yes, personal hygiene and uh, taking care of reproductive health during adolescent years plays a huge role in their future. And uh, as the puberty approaches, the child's body undergoes so much transformation that it is really confusing for the child. For the female, breast development is there and for all children, axillary hair, pubic hair, they are growing and they feel very shy and they even refrain from talking to their family members, even their parents. So sometimes they are always confused, you know, how to go about taking care of their private parts and how should they take care of it. So first of all, I would like to uh, tell the parents that they should always be available to the children. If they are spending quality time, relaxed time with their children, then only the child can approach them with such queries and whatever doubts they are facing. So availability of parents is really important. And secondly, uh, for the children, I would like them to know that you just have to take a daily bath with simple soap and water mild soap and water and as you clean your other body parts that that's how you have to clean your private parts as well there is no need to use a disinfectant or any kind of antiseptic solutions or any kind of uh, repeated cleaning is not required and you should not make your axillary and groin area wet and do not wash it again and again and in fact, you have to keep all your flexural regions, axilla, groins dry and clean. And any kind of deodorant is strictly to be avoided uh, in the groin area because it can cause severe allergic reactions. And regarding cleaning of axillary and pubic hair, there are so many methods available. You can use intermittently hair removing creams provided you have gone for an allergic test for these creams. You just apply these creams on any unimportant area of your body like legs or uh, your back of your hands. Just keep it for 30 minutes, then wash it off. Watch it for 3 days. If there is no redness, there is no irritation, then you are not allergic to the cream and you can use it intermittently, not very regularly. And then other methods like shaving, with a disposable razor is also allowed and waxing is also suitable for some children for removing hair of hands and feet but it should be done in a very clean salon or at home under the supervision of some elder sibling or some senior family member or parents. Taking care of uh, personal hygiene during menstrual time is also very important. Because as soon as a young girl approaches menstruation, there is so much happening in her life suddenly. So mother has to sit with the child, explain her what is happening and then make her understand how to go about it. So how to change sanitary napkins, how frequently they should be changed, how to dispose them of and how to take care of your body parts during menstruation. So all these are very, very important part of education other than their academic curriculum. So family has to play a very big role in this because if personal hygiene is maintained during menstruation, then lot of reproductive tract infections, urinary tract infections can be avoided. And these infections take a very big toll on the health of females during their fertility years. So personal and reproductive hygiene is very important. Ma'am, parents often have a query about how to deal with the topic of 
sexual abuse and explaining this term to children. Could you please guide us in this? Uh, yes, it is a very pertinent question. And in India, talking about reproductive organs, talking about uh, sexual identity and uh, uh, sexual uh, education is always a taboo in most of the families. But when the child is growing, we must tell the child that his or her body is their own and their they have a right to not allow anybody to touch their body parts without their consent. And they uh, must be educated right from the very early formative years that their body is their own. And they must respect it and value their body. So age appropriate education is very important. So as the child's ages, accordingly, we have to talk to them in a very conducive atmosphere. And when we are talking, it has to be very light conversation and we have to tell the child that never feel shy if they are finding someone's behavior uncomfortable. So what is inappropriate touching? has to be told by the parents to the child throughout their adolescent years. And they must understand that no one can touch their body part without their consent. If early we address these issues, then lots of cases of sexual abuse can be stopped and dealt with properly. Because when in early age a child is abused sexually, it has a very deep repercussion on physical as well as mental well-being. And mental well-being of a child is very important for their growing years. So sexual abuse can be stopped with the family's support. And if we have an open atmosphere in the family and if we talk casually about what is right, what is wrong during our uh, routine conversation. Ma'am, though children study about sexually transmitted diseases in their science textbook, they don't really know much about this topic. Could you please explain this so that we may help our children to understand this topic better? Uh, yes. See, uh, with every changing generation, the socio-cultural norms, they keep changing. The morality keeps changing. So uh, uh, what was uh, uh, moral behavior in our uh, adolescent years is no more uh, a moral behavior in today's adolescent generation. So with the changing morality, the concepts are changing and the adolescents are wired to go for risk-taking behavior. Their brain is always seeking for some or other kind of sensational experience. So it is high time that we should stop thinking that premarital sex is wrong and uh, our society and our adolescents are not engaged in it. We should stop thinking that and instead we should focus on how to educate and talk with our youngsters about understanding safe sexual practices, about avoiding very serious sexually transmitted diseases. I am a venereologist by profession. So every day I see lots of patients in young age group with genital ulcers, with candida infection, herpes, and even HIV has become very rampant nowadays in young adults. So all these diseases are acquired through unhealthy and unsafe sexual practices. And these have lasting impact on an adolescent's future life. For example, HIV. HIV is a life-threatening infection. 
and there is still no cure for it. So lifelong taking medication and lifelong suffering the ill health and misery as well as social stigma. But a child does not understand when he is going for a risk taking behavior. That time the child's mind is not absorbing all these preventive measures and they are not concerned about all these things. But all it takes a moment to get this life threatening disease. So here from this platform, I want to appeal to my youngsters that you are using internet so much for so many things. So internet, there are lots of uh, safe sites, WHO has lot of links and websites who can educate you about how to go about healthy sexual practices and how to go about safe sexual practices. So you must educate yourself and educate your peers so that you can avoid getting into the trap of these serious life threatening diseases and this way you are compromising your future. First and foremost thing I would appeal to you that avoid meeting with strangers and do not let anybody touch your body or do anything to your body if at all you are feeling uncomfortable. So you have to set your boundaries. Do not go by anybody's pressure. Do not go by anybody's pressure. And please try to understand what is going on and try to get resources, try to talk with experts, try to go on internet on reliable sites and then understand how to go about safe practices. And as family, as school fraternity and as society, we should also now stop pretending that we are not facing this problem. Because if we are pretending, then we are directly encouraging our adolescents to go in for high risk taking behavior. And we are really endangering them if we are not addressing this issue. So we must take care of it and education about safe sexual practices is a must to every youngster. Ma'am, in our parent-teacher meetings, parents often complain that children don't like eating the nutritious food prepared at home. They prefer eating junk food and at times they even carry back the nutritious tiffins provided lovingly by the mothers. Can you please explain the importance of nutrition and eating good and healthy food to our viewers? Yes, nutrition is the core of adolescent health. And uh, in my clinic also, I'm daily bombarded with uh, questions about uh, what to eat, how to go about, how to make children eat good food. So uh, providing healthy and good nutrition to adolescents is a real challenge to parents as well as to adolescents as well. See, this generation has uh, kind of got a journey in their hands with just pressing one button and they are getting very tasty and uh, very decorated uh, food item delivered to the, their uh, doorsteps. So in the era of Zomato and Swiggy, we are asking our children to control their diet and make their diet healthy. So it's not easy for them as well. You know, uh, in our adolescent years we, uh, years, we did not have such great options. So it's a real challenge for the child as well. Because their mind is developing, they don't understand what is good and what is bad. But here from this platform, I am specially telling you all the effects your diet can produce in your developing years. So obesity and malnutrition, both are happening at the same time. Because of too much consumption of processed and packaged food by the youngsters. They are taking too much of MADA, sugary drinks and uh, energy drinks, lot of bakery items, cake, pastry, maggi, chips. So these are all processed, high carbohydrate, high fat containing food, which is very, very poor in nutritive value. 
So what happens? A child is consuming a lot of junk food. Now they are heading towards obesity. And 30% cases of childhood obesity, they go in for adulthood obesity. It's a fact. Bachpan mein agar aapko mutapa hua hai, to bohat chance hai ki aap bade hone tak ke mutape se safar karenge. So obesity has its own implication on the health. Jaise hi aapki obesity badhti hai, aapki body mein bohat saare changes aane lagte hai. For example, in girls, you must have hard PCOD. Polycystic ovarian disease. Every uh, few uh, girls are suffering from uh, PCOD nowadays. So PCOD has obesity, dark skin, acne issues. They have lot of unwanted facial hair. They have uh, hair loss on their scalp. So the whole syndrome is called PCOD and the main reason for PCOD is obesity and poor nutrition. Also, if in early age a child is obese, then there are very high chances that type 2 diabetes will be developed at early age. Pehle, 40 saal ke pehle, hum log history nahi kuchte the diabetes ka kisi bhi patient mein. But nowadays, very young adults are developing diabetes and it's a reality. So if we are not taking care of our children's diet, then we are going to produce diabetic adults. So this is very important. Secondly, obesity has its implication on malnutrition also because when you are eating a lot of junk food, you are avoiding nutritious food. So you are developing vitamin deficiencies at the same time. And lot of depression, anxiety, thyroid disorders, they are all associated with vitamin deficiencies during the growth period of an adolescence. So, now we make a diet ko healthy. So, I would like to say to the children, you have to respect your body. You have to listen to your body. Whenever you are eating, at least do one thing that see your food, what you are eating, feel your food and be mindful of your eating. So, when you eat when you eat food, your attention is in food, then your body gives you subtle hints that you are eating what you are eating, is it right or not? Your brain, your mind always guides you, but we are preoccupied. We are sometimes watching TV, we are busy on the mobile while eating. So how can we listen to our mind? So it's my request that whenever you are eating, please try to be involved with your food so that you can understand whether you are eating wrong food or right food. This is the first step. Secondly, you must understand that it's not about choice. Eating healthy food is a basic necessity. If you want to have a healthy future, a healthy life, then a healthy body and mind is must. And for a healthy body and mind, you have to eat properly. So I request you all to not skip your breakfast at all. So if you are eating small and frequent meals throughout the day and during adolescent years, your body requires a lot of good quality proteins and vitamins in your diet. So eggs, milk, cheese, other dairy products, fish and lot of different varieties of pulses like chana, rajma and daily at least one portion of fresh fruit and fresh salad especially the red yellow ones like tomato, carrot because these are the things which are going to provide you antioxidants and antioxidants are the chemicals which are going to take away your stress from your body. So they are very, very essential to keep you healthy for long term. So healthy khana khana bahut zaruri hai aur choice nahi hai aur aap small and frequent meals lijiye. Thoda thoda karke khaiye aur bahut saari chijo ko thoda thoda apni diet mein include kariye. Aur yaha pe mein parents se bhi ye kehna chaungi ki early age se, early classes se aap bachyo ko tiffin mein nuts jaysse badam, pishta, akhrot, खजूर, अंजीर, भुने हुए चने, भुनी हुई मूंगफली, 
अंजीर आदि चीज़ों को छोटे छोटे पैकेट्स बना के बच्चों को दीजिए कि जिसको वो अपने स्मॉल ब्रेक्स में खा सकें अपनी बस कम्यूटिंग में खा सकें और आजकल बच्चों की लंबी लंबी कोचिंग क्लासेस होती हैं तो कोचिंग के बीच में ये हेल्दी स्नैक्स बच्चे खा सकते हैं तो बचपन से अगर बच्चों को ये आदत रहेगी तो वो एडोलेसेंट एज में भी इसको फॉलो करेंगे जब उनकी बॉडी को बहुत ज़्यादा ज़रूरत होती है और हेल्दी ईटिंग की हैबिट्स जो है वो फैमिली से स्टार्ट होती है तो जब बच्चा बड़ा हो रहा होता है उस समय उसका माइंड एक स्पॉन्ज की तरह होता है वो अपनी सराउंडिंग्स में अपनी फैमिली में अपनी सोसाइटी में जो भी चीज़ों को देख रहा है ऑब्जर्व कर रहा है उसको वो सब कुछ एब्जॉर्ब कर रहा है एसिमिलेट कर रहा है अपने ब्रेन में अपनी हैबिट्स में सो so, पेरेंट्स को अगर हेल्दी ईटिंग की हैबिट नहीं है तो बच्चा कभी हेल्दी ईटिंग में नहीं जाएगा सो इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि बचपन से हम घर में एक फैमिली टाइम क्रिएट करें जब हम खाना खा रहे हैं तो एटलीस्ट वन मील पूरी फैमिली का साथ में होना चाहिए द मील टाइम शुड बी वेरी रिलैक्सिंग टाइम वेरी जॉयफुल टाइम वेन यू आर ईटिंग टूगेदर वेन यू आर चिट चैटिंग एंड दैट इज़ द टाइम वेन द चाइल्ड इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग टू एन्जॉय न्यूट्रिशियस एंड गुड क्वालिटी फूड and how to like the nutritious food so early age training and you have to be example for your child if you want your child to eat healthy you must know how to go about the child's nutrition you have to have the knowledge of nutrition and healthy food secondly school ke level pe uh, i think ki bachcho ki jo primitive years hote hain nursery class 1 2 उनमें बच्चों को फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल ब्रेक्स देना चाहिए द चाइल्ड शुड बी कम्पेयर टू ब्रिंग अ टिफिन विथ फुल ऑफ ग्रीन रेड येलो ऑरेंज फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स एंड देर शुड बी अ स्मॉल ब्रेक ऑफ ईटिंग दोज फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स सो इफ दे हैव अ हैबिट्स इन अर्ली चाइल्डहुड देर माइंड विल बी कंडीशन टू ईट हेल्थी सो देर आर वेरी स्मॉल स्मॉल स्टेप्स विच वी कैन टेक during early childhood and late childhood to so that we don't face the problem of too much junk food eating and adolescent brain always functions when they are giving rewards instead of punishment it is wired to function under rewards so when you are making your child eat healthy it should be a reward based practice you know you can uh, make a weekly schedule of Uh, cooking with children you can cook together and uh, every week one of the family member can share a very healthy and very tasty recipe and the child uh, can be a part of the whole cooking team this will create lot of fun and lot of positive vibration in the family regarding food secondly i always suggest that at least one meal per week should be cooked by the children of the family so that they know how much effort and how much energy is put uh, in cooking a good healthy meal and whatever their parents are uh, taking so much effort on laying down that food on their palate so if a child is cooking one meal and being appreciated for cooking that meal that will go a long way in building their healthy food habits so these are actually very small things but if we can manage to do then it goes a very long way in promoting a very healthy and good nutrition so eating healthy affects your mood eating healthy affects your overall performance in the school because your mind is more active more energetic more grasping power so children if you want to perform well you must eat healthy you must understand what is healthy diet and if you want to look good then there is no other option than a nutritious diet so acha dikhna hai acha banna hai aur acha kuch karna hai to acha khana padega theek hai to aap logo ko main ye bolna chahungi ki junk food aisa nahi hai ki nahi khana hai but apni boundaries khud set kare and how much is too much that should be your own discretion Thank you ma'am for your clear and concise explanation regarding the need to eat nutritious food. 
I'm sure our children will also be delighted to note that eating junk food is not a strict no-no and can be had occasionally. Moderation is the key word here. Continuing in the same line of thought, ma'am, it has been noticed that today obesity is a leading problem among teenagers. Can you please guide us about the need for physical activity to avoid obesity and also suggest some physical exercises that our children can do easily? Yes, physical activities are a must for uh, overall well-being of uh, adolescents, especially during their growing years. See, our body is designed and uh, developed from apes. So, we were designed for hunting, running, fighting for survival. So, robust physical activity, this is how our body is programmed for. So, if we are not physically active, then lots of hormonal changes they happen in our body and they ultimately lead to poor health. So during adolescent growing years, at least 20 to 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercises are a must. And nowadays, I'm seeing due to lots of importance to the academics and other uh, extracurricular activities, I see that children are not even getting time for playing. So as a society, as a fraternity, we are indirectly discouraging our children from playing and performing physical activity. So pardon me, but uh, from the schools also, I have seen that playing and sports activities are only for competitions. There are no random uh, playful open air activities for normal routine children. So those children who are athletic, who are very good in sports, only they are playing, only they are doing sports activities. And the children who are not very good in sports are not performing well. They are very shy, they are very conscious and they are uh, not even daring to participate in sports activities. And this way we are uh, discouraging them from open air playground activities which are very very important for their overall mental health and physical health. So I feel that at least weekly open air aerobic sessions or weekly open air combined yoga sessions with teachers, parents and children, some fun activities under the sun with lots of trees around, with fresh air, must be included in the curriculum, some or other how. Because I feel that academics plays a huge role in the success of the children, but their overall happiness question, their overall emotional intelligence, it all depends upon their uh, overall health, physical and mental. So sports, the value of physical activity cannot be undermined by giving importance to academics or any other thing. So what are the best exercises for adolescents? I suggest brisk walking in the evening and roller skating is a very interesting option for those children who are interested. Just bicycling long distance with their friends Listening to good music can be very relaxing and fun activity and dancing, running and uh, so many group sports activities, playing football, cricket, just randomly, not to prove anything, not to become a very good sports person, just for the sake of playing and running and laughing and shouting. So all these are very important. Secondly, Lot of uh, young adults are nowadays preferring gym activities. So I am not against gymming in adolescents, but I feel that their exercises should be fun. Why should they struggle with uh, machines in a confined space uh, when they have an option of uh, playing uh, outdoor under the sky and having fun with their friends? And I feel personally that if exercises are fun, then we don't need to remind our children again and again for doing that. 
they will automatically go in for exercises and uh, through exercises, we can manage so many diseases, lot of obesity issues, lot of menstrual irregularities and a lot of hair graying issues, acne issues. I always prefer to go for lifestyle changes first before starting my patients on medication. And I have always seen children understanding properly and following whatever guidance we are giving them, provided we are going for a positive approach to them. We have to encourage them positively by making them understand what is the use of it. And to the school authorities, I would suggest that we cannot underestimate the power of deep breathing and pranayama. I am a very strong yoga follower since my early uh, childhood and I'm a certified uh, yoga teacher as well. And I always recommend at least a 10 to 15 minutes of at least weekly or bi-weekly sessions in school for deep breathing exercises and pranayam right from the very early school years. Because this is a very, very important stress busting activity for children. And this generation of adolescents are really having plenty of stress of all sorts. So if we include these small things in their uh, curriculum, then slowly they will be conditioned and they will always get the positive benefits of uh, these uh, breathing exercises because it really makes a huge impact on the mental well-being of the children. And also yoga is very good provided we make it a fun activity. So group yoga events in the school and also in the community can be a very good way of encouraging children and the children can be made turn by turn. They can be made yoga trainers. They can be given responsibility of being yoga trainers turn by turn. Even the small children, they enjoy all these activities very well and this way they can learn a lot. So, Khelna, Hasna, Khilkhilana, Dorna, Ye Bachuka Ek Adhikar Hai, Jo Prakriti Ne Bachuko Ye Tofa Diya Hai, Or Hum Unse Ye Chin Ne Sakte. To Padhai Kitni Be Important Ho, Is Platform Se, Mai Appeal Karna Chaungi, Parents Se, Teachers Se, School Authorities Se, and Society, Puri Society Se. कि हमको एक ऐसी जनरेशन नहीं बनाना है जो किताबी ज्ञान से लैस है लेकिन जिसको जीवन जीने की कला नहीं आती तो क्यों ना हम अपने बच्चों को जीवन जीने की कला सिखाएं अपनी पढ़ाई अपने टेंशन को पॉजिटिवली डील करने की कला सिखाएं और सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है कि हमको हैप्पी एडल्ट्स जनरेट करना है जो एक बैलेंस्ड लाइफ लीड कर सके सिर्फ सक्सेस नहीं ओवरऑल वर्क लाइफ बैलेंस सो फिजिकल एक्टिविटीज आर रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द मेंटल एंड फिजिकल वेलबींग ऑफ एडलसेंस आई एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रेटिट्यूड टू यू मैम फॉर एक्सप्लेनिंग ऑल अबाउट द नीड फॉर फिजिकल एक्टिविटीज दो आर स्कूल डज ले अलॉट ऑफ एम्फोसिस ऑन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड फिजिकल एक्सरसाइजेस द पैंडमिक has really disrupted the schedule and our children are paying the price for virtual reality instead of physical world. We move towards the end of the program, but before we wind up, ma'am, what is your message to our adolescents, parents and teachers? Yes, I think adolescent health issues are really pertinent and to my uh, young listeners, I would say that each of you is unique and different. So please be confident about who you are and respect yourself just the way you are. First, you have to start loving yourself. Then only you can be loved by your friends, family and society. And please do not hesitate to ask your family, 
your teachers to support you and trust me all your parents all your teachers are on your side we may be having difference of opinions regarding so many things because we have lived our life we had lot many life experiences which you have not yet achieved we have made mistakes and that's why we don't want you to make mistakes so it's my sincere advice to youngsters that please at least listen to your teachers and parents because they are the biggest support system to you do not let them away from you because they are always there for you even if you make some mistakes it's okay we can deal with it together you can always approach your family you may be scolded but do not hesitate and do not make again a mistake of hiding your mistake so come out openly try to discuss your issues and take help at the early stage and to parents i would say that it is very very important that we build a very healthy family atmosphere where we are just sitting together with each other in this internet era it is really important for all of us to come out of our own individual virtual worlds and meet in the real world to be in reality with our children to be in reality with our neighbors and friends so we have to plan lot of activities with the children spend some time with children some gaming activities some outings some picnics and some social events where the child can express itself so adolescents are individuals who are yet to find an identity so we have to help them find their own selves we have to refrain from judging them we have to refrain from blaming them we have to learn to listen to our youngsters whatever they are trying to tell us we have to patiently listen and then discuss with them we have to respect their identity the children have come through us but they don't belong to us we are guides and mentor to them and we are the best support system to them so let's together nurture a adolescent generation which is 100% healthy physically mentally and emotionally so all the children wishing you all the best stay healthy and stay happy thank you very much ma'am for such an informative program we are very grateful to you for all your words of wisdom and we look forward to more such interactive sessions with you to help us and guide us in dealing with all the ignited young minds under our care thank you very much ma'am once again thank you so much for making me a part of this initiative and i really enjoyed this conversation and i'm very very grateful to all my listeners the parents the students and i sincerely hope that whatever we talk today uh, makes a little impact on uh, our adolescents and their well being thank you so much our next guest for the program today is mrs sakshi khandelwal ma'am has a masters degree in psychology and is a psychotherapist with specialization in play therapy rebt gestalt and transactional analysis she has worked in many hospitals and schools and has experience of working with people of different age groups she does regular psychotherapy with adults and children and deals with the issues of anxiety depression relationship concerns and trauma we welcome you ma'am and request you to begin our session today hello everyone my name is sakshi khandelwal and i am a psychologist and a therapist uh let us first start with discussing what exactly is mental health mental health basically is uh, you know uh, uh, 
putting social, psychological as well as emotional well-being all together. Any disruption in any of these could affect our day-to-day -day life, could affect our physical health and could lead to a mental health disorder. When I talk about disorders, some of the common ones found among children these days could be anxiety disorder, mood disorders, ADHD, or some kind of learning disabilities. Uh, let us start with discussing what anxiety exactly is. Uh, anxiety is basically a very loose term that we throw around just like that. You know, I'm anxious, I'm feeling stressed out. But anxiety disorder when we talk about there's a lot more going on than just that. You have irritability, unable to focus on stuff, you're, breath, you're feeling breathless all the time, uh, you're unable to sleep, you, you're losing weight, unable to eat. And this has been going on for a really long time. The most important part to remember here is that this is happening continuously for a really long time. And one of the important to remember is that uh, uh, anxiety can sometimes also lead to feeling tired all the time and it can really flare up when the person is really stressed. Uh, among children these days, it's very common to get anxious pretty easily, uh, especially from the time of pandemic when we have been unable to meet our close friends or be around other people our age or just basically being unable to go out or have any kind of physical activity. It has been found that pe people, especially young children, have been really anxious. It is very difficult to be in a situation where you are unable to go out at all, move at all. And that have led to a lot of people feeling anxious and depressed most of the time. Uh, anxiety disorders could be of various kind. One, we have general anxiety which is basically all the symptoms that I just told you, irritability, uh, unable to focus on stuff, uh, unable to eat, not able to sleep, uh, could also make a person cry a lot or have really terrible mood swings. Uh, some other kind of anxiety disorders are OCD, phobias and panic attacks as well as PTSD. PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. It is not very common, but there could be some symptoms of PTSD present in some people, uh, especially after the pandemic, especially losing a loved one has led to a lot of people feeling anxious and nervous all the time. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder basically means when you have been through a very traumatic experience, could be an accident, losing a loved one, or could be feeling ashamed on stage because you weren't able to perform well. Uh, these have all led to someone being unable to focus in the similar situation. Uh, PTSD also has some other symptoms. Could be increase in heart rate, could be uh, a palpitation, or uh, could also lead to a person feeling extremely, extremely stressed when put under the same situation. Some of the other kinds of anxiety disorders are OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. Although not very common among kids, but after the pandemic, it has been found the number of cases of OCDs have been increased. Uh, like I said, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. So, you know, obsessively cleaning all the time, uh, sanitizing your hands, washing your hands again and again, which has even led to a lot of people having problem with their skin, but they were still washing their hands. They get so, so anxious when they go out. They always want to wear the mask. They want to continuously clean. This is also a, a disorder that has been found to uh, be very common among uh, youngsters these days because of the high number of cases of corona. Some of the other reasons for increase in the number of cases of anxiety could be high expectations and pressure to succeed. Uh, kids these days have uh, great knowledge. They go on internet, they find everything. They're pretty smart and um, they know how to uh, figure out things faster than all of us. 
but it has also increased a kind of anxiety that whether I'll be good enough in this world or not. Uh, there's also a lot of pressure from the parents and teachers from time to time. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying that, uh, uh, you know, like when you see others succeeding, you feel that, oh, am I good enough or not? It's very common, but that has also increased uh, the level of anxiety among a lot of kids. There's also a, a level of uncertainty that has started and um, due to the whole lockdown and pandemic, we are always worried what will happen next and we are unable to plan the future. So for the kids especially, it's very difficult to plan a career ahead because they're always worried whether they'll be able to do what they want or not. Uh, continuously reading on news or social media about these things also add to their anxiety. Uh, social media. Uh, all the kids these days are constantly connected to social media. So, so it's not very difficult for us to imagine that they are continuously worried whether I'll be successful or not, whether I'll be able to reach there or not. Uh, now, here is where it's very important for the parents and teacher to understand. Uh, also, the students, it's not a one-way process. All three of us need to work together to have a better mental health. Uh, the kids can get anxious, so can the parents. So could the teachers. We all have troubles. We all have stress. So it's very important that we understand that we need to create a healthy environment together. It's not just the kids. It's not just the parents or just the teachers who need to work. All of us together can only provide a healthier environment for each other. Um, it's very important for parents and teachers to be aware of some of the common symptoms that you'll find. You'll find maybe that a child has suddenly uh, shown lack of interest in studies. There could be a change in behavior or it could be increase in irritability, uh, avoidance of activities, school or social events, not wanting to go out or talk to anyone. Uh, could also be a change in their performance at school, suddenly drop in the uh, grades could also be there. Uh, could Some kids might also show some kind of risky behavior like being rebellious. So it's very important that we understand all of these stressors and we note, make a note of it. These are all red flags that we need to pay attention to. Now, what as a ward we can do? Uh, you need to talk to the children about the potential stressors. How are they feeling? What are they feeling? Uh, there's always uh, this behavior that we have noticed that, you know, we all try to put the blame on each other. The students will say, you know, you don't understand. The parents will say, you don't understand. But the whole point here is to have a good communication between each other. We need to have clear communication, understand what is affecting each other. As a parent, you need to tell the child, you know, that if you do this, that really makes me feel bad or hurts me. As a child, you should be able to tell your parent that, you know, I'm feeling nervous about this. I am I want to talk to you about this. So having a good communication is really, really important. It is also very important to set some expectations which are realistic for the child. It's very important to have expectations. It's also important for the child to have goals. But we need to be realistic about it. We need to see the potential that our child has. We need to have these communication, uh, uh, these conversations with the child to understand what they really want to do. Uh, there are a lot of different things that we can do for anxiety that can really help the child feel better. Having small activities together, you know, ask the child to help you around the house from time to time. Maybe have some creative projects that you can do together. Go for a walk together. Listen to some music together. Uh, make it as enjoyable for each other as possible. When you are happy, you make others happy as well. So it's very important to, you know, enjoy things together. Uh, some of the other things that can really help with the uh, anxiety, not just for child, it's for everyone, is breathing exercises. Just breathing in and out can really help. Any minute you're feeling stressed, just take a deep breath. It can really help. 
uh, other ways that you can help the child is maybe uh, you know uh, figure out activities that you enjoy together gardening or uh, cycling or just going for a long walk together or listening to music that is you know good for both of you just do something with your child uh, i don't want you all to do everything together i understand we all need our space as well but these are things that you can do alone as well as with anyone around you uh, for people who feel anxious all the time one of very good way is to maybe write a journal write a diary where you pent out all your emotions that only you really want to take out you want to maybe take out but are unable to share it with the world but really want to say it all so uh, journaling can really help see what things are around you write about those things write about the emotions you're feeling take it all out on the paper that's the best way uh, you can deal with your anxiety uh some other techniques that you can really try for anxiety is uh, maybe yoga yoga can be really helpful uh, there's this thing that we call the gratitude journal where you talk about uh, the things that you are grateful for thankful for write every day what are the good things that happened today it could be something as simple as oh i saw flower that was so beautiful that just made me happy small things small things can do wonders in our life figure out ways that th- that you feel happier uh now moving on from anxiety uh, i would like to discuss aggression a lot of adolescents these days uh, get really aggressive they feel that they need to really take out their anger somewhere all these are signs of some kind of mental health disorder it could be depression or anxiety because you feel like you're unable to express your emotions so all these bottle up emotions have somewhere led you to feel that you're unable to express yourself freely uh, freely and uh, to take it all out you get aggressive uh you also need to figure out what could be the reason why the child is feeling so aggressive lately is it just the emotions or has there been an incident uh sometimes uh, there are incidents where the child got irritated or aggressive because they didn't like the way they were scolded in front of the whole class let's be real here that uh, kids these days uh, would get really embarrassed when scolded in front of say the peer or uh, in front of the class and it can sometimes scar them and they hold it uh, for a really long time so we have to be very mindful of the child here we have to understand that these emotions could uh, uh, really affect uh, the child's well being Uh, some of the good ways you can deal with aggression is maybe help the child get into a physical activity uh, the best way to take out anger is you know through doing some physical work could be could be uh, skipping the rope playing basketball football or any other physical activity that requires a lot of work can really help you take out your anger in a more positive direction uh, for the parents at home one of the best ways do not shout back at your child when he is being aggressive you know it will just add it add to it or maybe will even make your child go into a shell the better way to deal with it is just let the child vent it be calm let them talk listen to what they are saying uh, sometimes just having someone to listen to can really help uh, someone uh, other way is maybe a reward and punishment method that you can come up with with your child uh, every time the child has done something good appreciate them tell them how proud you are of them but at the same time when they have done something wrong you have to be strict i'm not saying go around scolding the child but just be strict and be clear that this is this is a kind of behavior that won't be tolerated uh, the rewards do not have to be monetary they shouldn't be monetary actually it should be something that will just bring a smile on your child's face a good compliment can do that do wonders you can make the child so happy by just saying hey i'm proud of you just try uh 
now moving on uh, one of the major issues that uh, we face with kids these days is addiction social media mobile phone addiction that we are just unable to handle uh, first it should be very clear that you know uh, you need to understand mobile is not a bad thing so use of social media does not always have to be a bad thing you you need to get this out of your head that it's not always bad to use your phone or your uh, social media you can learn a lot from these things what's important is to manage how long you use it and how you use it we have this habit of literally just telling the child that you know what you you won't be allowed to do this anymore don't do that they need it they need to stay in touch with their friends it's part of their life uh, and also it can have a negative effect sometimes telling them not to do something can make them rebellious and want to do that behind your back it's better if the child does that in front of you then behind the back when you are unable to keep an eye uh set times with your child give them time limit that okay you are allowed to use it half an hour a day or one hour a day it completely depends on you how long you want to allow your child to use it but also understand that if you are doing the same thing in front of them they won't learn when you are telling your child that like, you know just keep your phone down let's sit and talk you are supposed to do the same thing then you shouldn't be giving the reason but i am working you are not uh you should be able to take out time with your child every day when you can sit and talk when you can all keep your mobiles down on silent or something and do something together uh set screen time for the child you should be very clear that okay you are allowed to use it for this long keep an eye on what they are watching what they are seeing uh you have to monitor that you have to uh ask your child but always ask them can i see your phone can i use this you have to keep an eye on uh, what they are doing we just want to make sure that they are not uh, learning something wrong we need to trust their judgment but we have to be mindful about a lot of things that are dangerous for our children on net uh some effective ways of uh, decreasing the use of mobile phone could be uh setting screen times not just for your child but also for you and deciding that okay this is family time we'll sit together we'll do something others could be do not just uh snatch the phone from your child saying okay it's enough just always give them a warning prepare them okay you have 5 more minutes and then eventually take the phone from them uh you can also uh, sort of have uh, set family rules that uh, no phones allowed on the t- uh, on the dining table or no one's allowed to take the phone uh, to the bedroom they can all keep their phone out on the dining table at night or wherever you feel it's safe uh these are some ways that you can reduce the use of it because you at the end of the day you also need to understand that our kids these days do need uh the cell phones they are learning also from them it's not just that they are learning bad things they are learning good things also but they need to learn where to draw the line and we are the only ones who can teach them that now moving on to one of the more pressing issues that is bullying uh this is a very sensitive topic and i would like you all to understand that bullying could be in different forms it doesn't have to be physical bullying it could be verbal emotional also uh when you make fun of a child for being too thin too feminine or too fat it is all different forms of bullying uh you tell the child that oh you've been gaining weight oh you look like this oh you look like that uh you do not realize the amount of trauma you are leaving with them you might move on but the child might live with the same trauma for the rest of it for parents i want you all to understand that uh, emotional bullying like i said could also be when you compare the child with other kids look at that child he's so active why are you always sitting on the bed uh when we continuously nag the child around uh it kind of scares them as well as leave deep mark on them they might never be able to recover from it 
teachers be mindful of what you tell a child uh, peers all the students you all have to be very aware of what you tell other kids for you it might just be a joke but for someone it could really scar them for life so we have to be very careful about bullying uh, as teachers you really need to keep an eye out for kids who might so, uh, seem very quiet or alone all the time might check around if they are being bullied or being uh, verbally abused in some kind keep an eye out for any kind of those signs uh, in the end i would really like to wrap it all up with saying that uh, anxiety depression all these things can really be uh, taken care of if we are just mindful of each other if we are taking care of each other as well as ourselves there are a lot of emotions that we all face all we need at the end of the day is a good listener who will listen to us who will talk to us who's ready to accept us for who we really are um there's always your parents or teacher who are ready to help you just just be a little bit more uh, uh open to them communicate with them and you can always come to a therapist you can always talk to me you can always uh, uh come to us with no matter what problem you have it's never too small for us and what's the harm you know we don't give you medicines we don't give you injections you might end up making a friend so just listen to each other talk to each other and uh, uh we can all deal with this together Thank you very much ma'am for consenting to be a part of this webinar. I am sure we have all benefited immensely by your explanations. We look forward to collaborating on more such informative sessions with you. Once again, I express my sincere gratitude to you ma'am. Thank you so much.